artists create challenging work around many things. They are the first to really examine issues in a community and shine a light on it. Art can do that really well in terms of reaching in to our intuitive self, our emotional self, which sometimes has much more common sense than our, our logical thinking, which is really compartmentalized and limited because art has a great way of, of bringing the left and the right side of the brain together and the heart and the mind and the soul and all of those things integrating our full humanity, which so much of what we do every day doesn't integrate. Creating change is something that I'm very interested in personally and I've really struggled with. How do you convince other people to have a lighter footprint on the planet or to care more about the environment? And quite frankly, it's not an easy thing to do. I tried being angry. Angry doesn't work. You yell at people, they don't really respond positively. <laughs> um, then I tried uh, just modeling and, and changing my own life. And then through my artwork, I feel like I have an opportunity to at least raise issues. And I think deep change comes from personal experience. And so art is a way to really connect on that deep personal level. In, in any community, it doesn't matter if you're First Nations or not, there are people thinking outside the box. I thought that I was going to go into the marketing world and make millions of dollars. Sort of the gist of it was to sell products to people that they don't necessarily need, but creating that desire or creating that marketplace. For, for me, for somebody who's thinking about society, thinking about my community and my family and our people, the Kwantlen people, and sort of these social ills that have we've been beset with, that I just knew that that wasn't the, the journey that my life was going to take. So I left my marketing studies. I took up anthropology for the next two years. Uh, it really filled that void. Make Me See Smile was started last year by my friend Jenna and I. It's inspired by a similar project called Make DC Smile, which was started in Washington, DC by a man named Masood. Uh, and it's just a project to spread kindness and celebrate random acts of kindness. People create art all the time, every minute of the day. That's why I like to work with community to do projects, because sometimes it, it's an opportunity to reawaken that creative self in someone because we can reinvent ourselves every day. We can reinvent this planet um, just by the things that we do and how we think about it. I'm working on, on water body directly. So it is a love song for water. It's a celebration. A lot of it does relate to climate change. I've created a piece of music and it is a discreet little thing in itself. As community members join me and we'll expand on that piece, then it will become a, a collective piece where they'll be adding movement and lyrics, etc. And, and I am working on a series of photographs of the river from my front door. of my work uh, is mixed media and I tend to use materials that are historical photographs and one of, one of the themes in my work is the is water and I'm very interested in the surface of the water and what we see and what we don't see what's below the surface and for me over the last 10 years uh, most of my work has related to the ocean and particularly the ocean here in British Columbia looking at that body of water as a series of interconnected ecosystems where the similar species are under water but there are different pressures on um, on those species depending on where you are and how we are connected to um, to those species and how they're all interconnected to each other as well it's really looking at what's our place in nature and um, 
how do we impact natural ecosystems and what are all the other relationships that those species have with each other because it's not all about us. I did some work for Amnesty International uh, a couple years ago. Uh, it was actually during the, the Robert Picton trial in Vancouver. The Families of Murdered Missing Women had created an emblem for it. I'm very proud of this piece because it honors the women in our community who were taken from us too soon. What Amnesty International did was they created a banner and they took it to uh, the downtown east side and families of murdered and missing women signed the banner. A member of parliament took it to Ottawa and gave it to Prime Minister Harper in the House of Parliament as a direct action uh, that they wanted justice. Up till that point, I didn't really think that my work could would fit into that realm of activism. Just recently, I was involved with uh, a 1,200 kilometer canoe journey up the coast of British Columbia, and I spent the summer doing it. It was two and a half months long, um, and the purpose of that was to raise awareness for the, the pipeline issues in the province. Uh, our people found refuge at the top of the mountain range, and, and that's where we stayed. and. Um, so the, the story that I told on the canoe was that. Um, it was about all thing, all life forms coming together to work together in harmony for the greater good. If I can say that there was one piece that that is the most important work I've done, I would say it would be that. So it had an impact on other people in other communities uh, and it continues to be part of this legacy. and and I'm still doing that work. So I'm still in that canoe, I think, so. Art is our expression of ourselves in a particular time. And so its importance is as a collective memory of where we are right now. If you're going to put your ideas and your thoughts and your heart and, and your physical energy out into the world, that the work that you are creating is a, a physical manifestation of it. So the energy you're putting out is the energy that you're going to get back. The role of art and artists is elemental. It's something that 